My late husband and I have three kids, Elena, teen, Lucas, teen, and Elizabeth, tween. My husband passed away four years ago and had a large enough life insurance policy that I was able to pay off the house and had enough left over for nearly triple the kids' college funds. There's enough money in each of their accounts for them to go to a public university debt-free or at least two years in a private university without scholarships or financial aid. Elena has always had mental health and behavioral issues. She's been in therapy since she was four and until last year was attending an alternative school. Over the summer, she stole her dad's car and crashed it after I said she couldn't go on vacation with her friend. Luckily, she and the people in the other car were okay, but my insurance wouldn't cover the repairs to the other car. Her behavior escalated after that, and her therapist and I decided it would be best for everyone if she went to a residential program for kids like her. She recommended a few places. I got to two of the facilities and speak with the staff and even some students, and I chose what I believe is the best program for us. A couple of weeks ago, my husband's parents asked how I was able to afford everything with the car in Elena's school. I make about $70,000 a year in an area where $100,000 for a family of four is considered low income, so it's a fairly valid question. I told them that all of this had to come out of Elena's savings account. There should still be enough in there for her to go to a community college and transfer to a state school, but she'd have to get a job to help pay for her expenses. They were so upset that I took all of this out of Elena's account. They were saying it's not my money to give, everything was in my name, that she's a child and I can't screw her over for life over a mistake, and that it's favoritism by only taking from her account and not her siblings. They asked how she feels about it, and I told them she doesn't know yet, and that we will break it to her when she's doing better in her program. Now they're even more upset with me and I wanted to know if I was the idiot. Oof, not the idiot. You're handling this beautifully. Your teen is having a mental health crisis. A college fund will do her zero good if she's so unstable that she can't thrive at college, and if she's struggling in high school, that's a really good indication that she'd struggle in college. Mental health care has to be her priority. I'm sorry that they're interfering. I also fear it's likely that they may try to stir up contention with Elena and her siblings down the road. I would ask her care team for help developing a plan for sharing with her how you funded her care. I suspect they'll agree to wait until she's stabilized, but it would be good to have a therapeutic team behind you. And really, unless her grandparents are in a position to fund her care or fund her college, they can stuff it. Yes, I think maybe in the meantime, stop calling them college funds if they happen to come up in conversation and rename them education funds, or perhaps just say they're for their future needs that dad would have wanted to try to cover or help with. Then it isn't like she missed out, it's just that she needed it for something sooner or different. You are the idiot. Those behavioral schools and programs are scams. You're wasting her money. Secondly, this wasn't some teenage rebellion or stupidity. If she's been in therapy since she was four, she is struggling with a serious health problem. If she got cancer, would you drain her college fund and only hers for chemo? Also, for what it's worth, the best treatment for troubled kids is usually therapy for the parent. That actually has scientific merit and backing. Treat yourself and there's a very good chance your daughter will improve. My, 35 male, wife, 34 female and I have been married for six years. One major point of tension is how we each see family. I'm very close with mine, especially my mom, while my wife has had a rough history with hers, particularly her mom, who isn't a pleasant person. My wife is low contact with her. My wife likes my mom and they've never had any issues. My wife sometimes calls me a mama's boy and says I can't make decisions without my mom's input and it's not in a light-hearted way. I've tried explaining to her multiple times that I just enjoy a close relationship with my mom and it doesn't mean I can't think for myself. I know her relationship with her family is complicated. When asked, she claims I talk to my mom too often. We literally talk once every two weeks at most. I've talked to her so many times and told her to knock it off multiple times. It always pops up with stupid crap, for example me offering to drive her to appointments or help fix things in my childhood home. My mom usually turns me down and I only help her like once a season. We don't have kids, so it's not like I'm spending time away and leaving my wife with kids. It's literally about a random Saturday where I'm gone for a few hours. The latest incident was over Thanksgiving plans. My mom is hosting and we were discussing what dish to bring. I wanted to check with my mom to make sure we weren't bringing something she'd already planned to make. After I told my wife I wanted to check first, she called me a mama's boy and said I couldn't do anything without my mom's stamp of approval. I told her, just because your family is crap doesn't mean I need to be crap to my mother. 
She looked angry and this started an argument. She's calling me a jerk and wants an apology, but I pointed out that I've told her so many times to stop making these comments. I'm in a very similar situation to your wife. I'm not super close with my mom, and my partner has one of those family sitcom relationships with his own mother. The feelings of jealousy and pain don't go away. I was supposed to have that too. All of those times my mom never checked up on me or didn't care when I checked up on her, they just make me so incredibly sad. I don't want a better relationship with her specifically. I just always wished I could have had a mom who gave a crap. Neither of you are the idiot. You're just humans who are in love and trying to feel supported by each other. How is the wife not an idiot for calling OP a mama's boy when all he's doing is having a healthy relationship with his mother? He called to make sure that they weren't bringing a duplicate dish and the wife told him that he can't do anything without mom's stamp of approval and you think that's not an idiot thing to do? I'm sorry, but that's ridiculous. Wife is a total idiot. She needs to deal with her issues instead of taking them out on OP. Just because she's not used to normal interactions doesn't mean that your relationship with your mom is unhealthy, which is basically what a mama's boy implies. Your wife needs therapy. It's normal to check with the host of what to bring. Wife needs a better way to deal with her jealousy and other issues involving family dynamics. Good luck. So my son's mother and I didn't work out. I travel six to eight months out of the year due to work. His mother has primary custody and I do send the ordered amount and some extra when I can. Fast forward to Sunday, I'm back for the holidays. I plan to take my son out for Halloween. He wants to be a Jedi, so I showed him my Jedi costume and asked to see the one his mother bought. I did send her extra to get the costume since I knew I would be back before Halloween, just wasn't sure I'd be back in time to get him the costume. She told him that I was going to buy it. I was upset but just played it off and said, oh, that's right, and it was in the mail. Thankfully, I found a costume yesterday. I did reach out to his mother when I had a moment in private to ask her where did the money I sent go. She told me that I have no right to question what she does with the money. Our child's needs are being met, and that is all that matters. She has primary custody and gets major say. I told her that the money was meant for our child, not her. She was not awarded spousal support. This is where I'm getting mixed messages and where I wish to know if what I said made me the idiot. My mom said I was being the idiot by questioning how she was raising our child when I'm not around. I don't think I was questioning her parenting, but I did question how she used the money I sent. She said she would get him the costume. If she needed extra for something that's related to him, I will always send extra. Yes, early on I was more accommodating. While she was not granted spousal support, I did cover her rent and also childcare, but she took forever to get a job, and when she did get a job, it was a retail job even though she has a teaching degree. Edit, I sent an extra 400 over because my son wanted a lightsaber he saw at GameStop, which alone was $235. She did agree verbally that she would take him and get the stuff he wanted. I sent her the money on the first, together with the child support payment. I get your reasoning, but you are the idiot. Honestly, why didn't you just buy him the costume in the first place? Coming from my own experience, I saw my dad weekly, but he still used child support as an excuse to put everything on my mom, every decision and every parental labor. If that's the case with you, then I'd say, yeah, she does get to spend the money how she sees fit. You traded in your say in the decision making for the convenience of not raising your own kid. Right. I understand that he's miffed because he sent extra money for the costume, but it seems like he didn't even think to factor in the time it takes. He just expected her to do the prep work for an activity he wants to do on his own time with his son. It sounds like he didn't even ask. Also, his comments suggest he has a problem with how she spends the money overall, and that is a clear, you are the idiot to me. The money doesn't have to go directly to his son, it can be spent on household expenses. What good is a costume if he can't pay the rent or have a working car or groceries in the fridge? So he sends her extra money that was discussed beforehand to be explicitly for the costume, she agrees to this and says she will take son out to buy said costume, but then doesn't do that and just gets to keep the extra money he sent. OP wasn't sure he'd be back in time to take the son out costume shopping. This was the whole point of sending the extra money. This, expenses above and beyond child support, should be used for exactly the items they were meant for. X was wrong in my opinion. I don't see how OP is the bad guy here. I, 22 male, have a roommate, let's call him Alex, male 23, who moved in about six months ago. I honestly never considered Alex may be trans, not that I would care if he was, but that's not the issue. 
He's a short guy and probably under 165 centimeters, 5 foot 5, has a lot of facial hair, muscles, and looks a lot like a short Henry Cavill, in my opinion. No one I know has ever brought up this idea before. I've had my friends and family at our apartment before. This is really the part that gets to me because my mom is extremely against any gay people, and if she sensed anything was up, she would have caused problems right away. Alex and I get along, we're polite, but not really friends. He's quiet, but super polite, always pays rent on time, helps with chores, and even shares his cooking with me. I appreciate having him around, especially because my last three roommates were each their own horror story. The issue came up when my girlfriend, let's call her Sarah, female 28, came over one day. Alex was shirtless. To clarify, I forgot to tell Alex that she was coming over, and she noticed the scars on his chest. After that, she was quiet and short with me her entire stay there. When she got home, she blew up my phone, asking why I had a female living with me. I was confused and asked what she was on about. She says that she knows that his scars are from top surgery and that he's short, so he had to be trans and a born female. I tried to explain that even if Alex is trans or a born female, that there's no way I'd be attracted to him because to any person who looked at him, you would see a freaking guy. Plus, he's respectful and doesn't cause drama like my last roommates, which she knows about. Just to be clear, I honestly still have no idea if Alex is even trans. I googled it and those scars could be from some other surgery, like heart surgery or gynecomastia. And I really don't have an argument for him being short, but there is a lot of short men. At first, Sarah wanted me to just ask Alex if he was trans, which why the heck would I do that, or give her his last name so she can run a background check. I said no to both. Then she said this was a violation of trust and that if I didn't either find out if Alex is trans and kick him out, or just kick him out, that she would have to re-evaluate things, basically threatening to break up. I said I don't do ultimatums and that we're done. Since then, she's been messaging me every single day for over two weeks, even after I blocked her on everything because she wouldn't leave me alone, angry that I wouldn't do this small thing for her. She ranges from, are you sleeping with him? Let's just talk. Why can't you at least give me closure and ask him? To the most recent, her telling our mutual friend about the situation. Our friend wants no part of this crap show. I didn't feel bad at first, but after talking about it online, I've had some people say I should have just asked my roommate if he was indeed trans just to keep the peace, or that I shouldn't have essentially picked my roommate, who I've only had for about six months, over my girlfriend of five years. I wonder if I'm being unreasonable. I legitimately do not see how any straight dude could find Alex attractive, personally, but maybe I should have done something just to keep the peace. Maybe Alex is trans, maybe not. You don't care, and it's his business to inform you if he is. You're not saying you're part of the LGBTQ plus community or attracted to him, so not sure why it would be your business. Not the idiot, and it's not your job to interrogate your roommate about his identity for the sake of a relationship that clearly has issues. You did the right thing by standing up for him. I'm honestly disturbed by the girlfriend's behavior. Flying off the handle like that? Also, why did this 23-year-old woman get with a 17-year-old guy five years ago? Five years isn't a major age gap once both are over 21 in my opinion, but at 17? Sounds like she showed her true nature. Opie dodged a bullet. Not just because she's a bigger, but because she accused him of sleeping around. Why the heck would you be an idiot for leaving someone like her? She's neurotic about assuming you're a cheater. That alone is grounds for dumping for your own sanity. Just because you spent a long time making a mistake, that doesn't mean you have to hold on to it. Update. Did you break up with her? Yes. During the text conversation, we broke up. I always told her I have one rule that I don't do ultimatums. If she were to say, choose X or me, that I would leave. I put up with a lot of crap, verbal and physical, but I don't have to put up with that kind of BS. Ages? I was 17 and she was 22 or 23 when we got together. It's been a long time, so I'd have to look back to make sure. But yeah, I was for sure 17. We got together the day I turned 17. Our anniversary is my birthday. I get that sounds bad. I really do. But at the time, I didn't see it as bad. Just in case it's asked, our moms encouraged it. I talked to Alex. To clarify, I didn't ask him about his scars or mention that specifically. I said my ex-girlfriend was under the impression he was a trans person, made sure to say I didn't care if he was or wasn't, and that I broke things off. We talked about irrelevant stuff for a while, and then the question came up, would you care if I was trans? To summarize things, yes, Alex is trans mask. 
He had top surgery when he was 19 and has been on hormones since he was 18. He even has a tattoo with the date he started testosterone. While the idea that he could have been a dude with gyno, cancer or something else is completely reasonable, it just happens that Alex is trans, and I don't care about that. Alex is Alex. Alex is going to help me out with finding some low-cost or pay-scale therapy because he personally hasn't heard good things about the college's therapy services. Like everyone else has said, yes, it was abuse, I see that. I will also hold higher standards for myself in the future. Alex sent me the information for the therapist he sees, and I'll contact them in the morning. The landlord knows there is a domestic incident, and I trust him when it comes to making sure my ex doesn't show up. The do not allow list was made in my mind for this reason. I'm not ready to talk to my mom about this, but I hope with some therapy and time I will be. She knows something's going on, but she believes this is a break and not a breakup. 